Oh, hello, Evelyn. Welcome to the very final video for Let's Play Stardew Valley. I recommend watching the supplemental video that's going up alongside this, just to wrap up all the stuff before 1.3 comes out, because primarily this video is focusing on the new stuff. Including a little cutscene that happens with Evelyn. She's actually introducing one of the new craftable items. A garden pot. This allows me to grow crops indoors. There also happens to be a new crop that can only be grown indoors. So that's the only thing I'm going to grow with the pot. It's, it's mud and fire. And then some dirt. It is made with clay. I remember that. It does also allow you to grow crops outside in the areas that are covered in the decoration grass that you can't harvest for hay. If you really want to min-max this, now you can. I think you can put sprinklers in them as well to really automate things. Put a sprinkler in my house. Right next to my bed. Now here's another thing that I learned. I can put hats on a couple of things. One of them was added to 1.3. I think we could do this before, but I can add hats to my brother Worst over there. Oh my god, I did not know you could do that. Yes. That's awesome. But also, with version 1.3, I can put hats on my horse. Yes! Yes! Okay, this is not the best game ever. Did you see my hat horse? Another thing to wrap up, we have a bunch of these buildings that I can get from the wizard. So in the interest of completionism, including that golden clock, which I can definitely buy right now, I'm going to get one of each. If you have space. I have some somewhere. Yeah, I'll put it by the greenhouse. A place where I don't need protection from debris, but whatever. You have gained powerful time magic. Also get the obelisks, allows me to teleport to places I'm never going. Because this is the last video. They're mostly expensive with just money, not so much materials. But you might have wanted to hang on to some of them well ahead of time. Yeah, these are a few of the things that I actually don't have on my save file. I just did not have the cash flow for it. Now that's actually a mod. That's not something you get from the wizard. But I went ahead and put one in anyway. Because it's actually a really useful mod. It's definitely something you'd want to pick up earlier in the game. Though, because you can only get it from the wizard, I don't know how useful it would be, but... It covers a wide range. Basically, any of your tools you have selected, including the watering can and seeds, It'll cover, like, a 3x3 three three square surface around you. You could cover a lot of ground with it. It's pretty cool. I'll show it off later. Now this is a new heart event with Linus. And also it is blackberry season, so he, he can actually activate the bushes himself, and now he's just leaving blackberries along the ground. Is that not scripted as part of the cutscene? Just there happened to be blackberries in the bush, so the NPC shaking them made them pop out? Exactly. Don't invite Linus to live on the farm. He takes that the wrong way. He says out loud. Okay, Santa. No, Grandpa is Santa. Okay, well... I don't know, Walmart knockoff Santa? I like this little cutscene. It emphasizes something that's not really shown. It's hinted at, but it's not really clarified. Linus is out here by choice. 
He's not a sad old man. He's actually perfectly happy. He's just a freaking. Put that where I can actually see it. Worst is getting festive. Well, this is something I haven't... I at least haven't seen while I was recording. But when Sebastian goes off on some of his walks, he will go back to his old home. Right as his sister's leaving. Tomorrow. Aw. That's cute. Still none of them acknowledge that I'm their in-law. She especially did not acknowledge it. I'm waiting for something to activate. Probably need to wait a couple days. But there is new stuff with the carpenters. This might be what triggers it, actually. Talking to Penny, she says, it's embarrassing to be the only people living in a trailer. So maybe we'll be able to fix that. There he is. Spoiler, you can't. Or can you? I don't know, maybe it's part of the update. You get him one of those 60s modular houses. Which is pretty much just a trailer that can't actually move. Which is pretty much what their house is. Personally, I'm much more bothered by the tires and beer bottles in the ground outside than the fact that they actually live in a trailer. What the? Crab party. Willie's got crabs. Are you having a crab head night? I kind of wish there was one going up the ladder. <laughs> yeah. Or one with little sash, then it could be a crab bachelorette party. One of them would need to wear a tiara. Well, maybe the party's for best and they're just late. the time I was at my parents' place and opened the fridge and the crisper drawer was just full of live crabs. <laughs> and then I opened the freezer and there was a fish at eye level. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't go in their freezer anymore. Alright. I need like two pounds of melted butter now. And he will actually be selling crab cakes. Huh. I did not know about that one. That's not where horse goes. Sure it is. That's what happens when you warp with the cheat menu. I thought it would warp me outside of the building. I didn't know it warped me inside. But that's a new plant that can only be grown indoors. It's a cactus. So we can actually grow our own cactus fruit. And I cannot escape that way. Still no way to grow a coconut, though, right? Nah. So that was a new enemy. There's a couple of new enemies. Which only show up in the Skull Cavern. That was a carbon ghost. He only shows up on the mummy levels. As opposed to what? Inorganic ghosts? From level 25 on, we start seeing Iridium Crabs. And you can eventually break the rocks on their backs, using the pickaxe. And they drop iridium more. And from level 50 on, we get iridium bats. Because bats weren't annoying enough already. Now they're radioactive. Please tell me that they don't have radioactive of those, like, flying snake things. No. Thank goodness. Iridium snake jerks. Ooh! There's another craftable item. We saw these back in the multiplayer parts. But you can craft your own signs. And you can place whatever item you want on it. It doesn't use up the item. 
It's just for if you want to sign somewhere. That's kind of nifty. And I'm down here looking for some new stuff. I made a crap ton of staircases. Do you have an inventory of portable holes? Here it is. Very rarely there will be a treasure room in the Skull Cavern. You're on level 233. Yep. I went down far. Ooh, that was worth it. Really? It would have been. Back in the day. I like how you had all those staircases, but you still had 900 bombs. <laughs> Just in case. The staircases are faster. Yeah, because you don't have to wait for the bombs to explode. A uh, little what's her face is such an enriching environment. So you asked if the stuff you could buy at the night market was also in here, and I don't think it is. At least I'm not seeing any of it. The night market might be the only places you can buy those new paintings. Monster danglers. Oh no, Puber! Ah. Oh god. <laughs> this is why they banned dropside cribs. Oh, uh, he's fine. fine. Okay. You <laughs> fixed it. He just passed out from sleep. So I'm finally showing off the wallpaper glitch. Yes! Unfortunately, turns out it only applies to two specific items and two specific wallpapers. The first one is this little starry night wallpaper. That one correlates to the dinosaur egg. It has the same item value. So you can grow a dinosaur out of wallpaper. <laughs> I thought it might apply to the void eggs. It does not, sadly. And the second wallpaper is this kind of flat sky green. Right there. That correlates to the prismatic shard. Mm. So you can bring that wallpaper to the desert and get a galaxy sword that way. I think this was patched out. I remember reading about this. But in earlier builds of the game, wallpapers counted as items you could give as gifts. But sadly, you can't anymore. Otherwise, that'd be a very easy way to befriend everyone. Because they would all think it's Prismatic Shard. I just like the sentence, you can grow a dinosaur from wallpaper. <laughs> and hey, look. What's up, Abby? Down to level 20, Abigail finally got up the courage to go in the mines. I'm down to one health! Is that only if you've triggered the uh, cutscene? I think it's her, like her two heart event or something. I think it was her ten heart event. Um, well, probably one of them, but yeah. And also she only shows up here when it's raining. And I'm guessing because the game updated, but all the treasure chests respawned. Marnie has a new item, the Auto Grabber. This is like an instant milking and shearing machine. Ooh, that's... that's not gonna end well. It's 25,000 gold, though, so... You'll probably want to save up for it, but once you can afford it, you pretty much never need to take care of your animals again. Ooh, as long as Bessie doesn't get stuck in the mechanism. And you do need to actually use your pickaxe or your axe to get it off the ground. You can't just poke it like all the other decorations. Does it only work with one type of animal product at a time? Nope. Ooh. It'll do them all at once. Quickly showing off the tractor here. Quite useful. and It moves about the speed of the horse and also has the same horse sound effects. <laughs> yep. It also can wear a hat. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. No, it, it does. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I've smelled part 28. It's just seven seconds long. It's just tractor with a hat. You might have seen there the Ancient Seed sprite got an update. So do the Corn Seeds. They look skinnier. But referring to the Auto Grabber, since the star value of your items probably isn't going to fluctuate that much, you may only ever need one. It's probably not going to run out of space. It's as big as a chest. Robin's got some new items I can build. 
This one we saw during the multiplayer. This is the thing you need to put on your farm in order to play multiplayer. It's the huts for your friends. There. I don't know why, but it amuses me that they're prefabs. You couldn't get one of those for Penny? We're going to be doing something else with Benny. And you can also build multiple shipping bins. If, say, you've got crops on the entire other side of the farm. Unfortunately, you can't just put it anywhere else. I thought it might be, like, an item you can put in your inventory and then place outside, like, by the mines. But, no, it only goes on your farm. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I was going to ask, because you can place chests outside the mines. Yeah. Which is something I do very often to make mining a lot nicer. Here's what we'll do. We're going to build Pam an actual house. It's 500,000 gold, 950 wood. And you need to have fully upgraded your house first. But in three days, she'll have a real house. Taking a quick look in the prefabs. You can't steal your friend's items. And all their tools are in the dresser. Yeah, you can steal their furniture, though. You can steal their furniture. Which gives me the idea. I'm gonna do the Dakota special. <laughs> yes! I played multiplayer with someone last week, and I did the same thing. <laughs> huh, just another kid's TV preventing them from sleeping. So like, there's a lot of space in the auto grabber, and you'll pretty much never run out. Yeah, even if you had every type of animal that produces products, I don't think you could max that out. You could probably go months without checking that. Like, that produces every star rating of every product. Yeah, even still. I mean, if you had a goat, goats do three levels of milk. Cows do three levels of milk. Doom horse. Oh, gosh. <laughs> can you get a second skull mask so you can match and be buddies? I'd probably put that blue bonnet on the horse. That's kind of my style. I think this is a new addition. You might have seen that green arrow. It was pointing towards places where I could pan. I definitely haven't seen that before. It could be a profession. Thinking about it, I'm not sure. All I know is it's new. The house is complete. We decorated for her. We put some beer bottles on the head of the door. Hmm. Huh. To emergency stash. Beow. Toot toot, Robin. <laughs> So you can decide whether to say that you paid for the house or not. Best's not humble. I'm not sure what the difference is. At least nobody's written it down yet. Shame if something happened to it? <laughs> I thought you were just hammering on our trailer for three days straight. Was my microphone muted? Because I said the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were. Aww. We'll share the laughter. I don't know. Maybe stop drinking so much. Funny you say that, Yami. You can actually sort of... <laughs> that is sort of one of the options you can give. I thought that might be pushing it. That's a little much. I 
I mean, as long as you're private, it's 20% alcohol by volume. Her pride is grain alcohol. No, that's her breath. <laughs> I mean, actually, you're like turbo poor now because your taxes went way up. Lewis only really goes around for business tax. Yeah, that's a good point. Wait, there's no property tax? Pack of shit, we're moving. I haven't had to pay any. Well, I do. And let me tell you. It sucks. But they went down by 80 bucks. It did go down by 80 bucks a year. Yes, pick up the damn tires. <laughs> There's, like, what, what is even that stuff like? Did you spill a can that was full of a single yam? It's like baked beans. <laughs> Still got the beer cans. Yep. Including one spilled all over those nice hardwood floors. For a homey decoration. Uh, well, let me tell you, that shit will never come out. Not even in the fridge. There's not much new to read or discover. It's pretty much the same as when it was a trailer. They got some palm trees, though. You can't actually swap out people's furniture like you can in a game like Animal Crossing. <laughs> I always find that kind of interesting. A new baby wallpaper hatched? <laughs> oh, you might be going that way, <laughs> yes. Ah, no. uh, not enough space. I'll just have to go with Paper Saurus. <laughs> I approve. And when it grows up into a bunch, it'll be a thesaurus. That's just what happens when you're super rich. Fun fact, if you've married Penny, then this cutscene is no different. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So if you get those early enough, you can sort of grow your own very good healing item. Like I said, I look pretty good. Three days after the house is built, there's a new cutscene with Pam. You caught me jamming my forehead on a prong. That's how we pray in this town. Here's my new bottle opener. Okay, well... In case you were wondering what JoJo was supposed to be an analog for. I think this is new music as well. Yeah, sounds new. It's the sad music, we don't hear it very often. Ah. But again, Concerned Ape can't just leave everything super happy, he has to bring it down to reality. Having a house doesn't make you poor, it's money. Yeah. It is very easy to have a house and still be poor. And here you are, spending it on statues. So you can't just straight up say your Ryobo isn't real. Oh my god, Dawkins, cut it out. And if you say that, you lose 100 friendship points with her. You lose 100 friendship points with me, too. Now give it back. 
Do you lose friendship points even if she's maxed out? Because typically, if they're at 10 hearts, you can't have them lose anything. All I know is that's what's supposed to happen. Funnily enough, you can remove the statue yourself. Oh my god. <laughs> Just take it with you. Where's your god now? <laughs> you go put it in the church in the back of Pierre's. <laughs> Pump the brakes, Penny. God. It's ending soon. Yeah, in like 20 minutes. Also, this happened. What? What? What am, what, what am I looking at? What is that? Crab baby. Oh. There's a robotic viewer. Aw, oh, a little bow on the alien's hair. The alien doesn't have hair. Oh, speaking of hair. <laughs> oh, there's that bonnet. This goes right over its eyes. I was a little confused. You have to actually be on foot for the shadow guy to show up. So resuming the reign of destruction that the drone did. In the pursuit of more of those notes. Only this time we're going to be seeing all of them. Are you just carrying around a fireplace? <laughs> Why not? I think you are. Now, I thought that note referred to the Junimo plush. It's actually something else. That's clearly a note from Linus. This is cute. A letter from Haley and Emily's mom and dad. Basically telling you their favorite gifts. That's what a lot of the notes are. And that is a treasure map. Ooh. Treasure. That's the random bench nearby the oasis. Now what the first letter was referring to is this specific spot by the fence behind the community center. There's a stone Junimo statue there. So can everyone see the Junimos or just you? I have no idea. You couldn't communicate with them before the wizard gave you his hallucination potion? I think it's implied that no one else can see them but you and the wizard. Another treasure right nearby the train station. That treasure chest is just for selling. It doesn't do anything else. Like, there's no actual treasure in it. And that's another place to get the strange doll. In case you wanted another one. Oh, these are awful. And that's the safety dance. That's a weird map. You have to go from the location on the map entirely in the direction that the map points to until you hit a solid object and then go another direction. I completely do it wrong, but I find the item anyway. No beer! That's the worst gift. I feel like that'd be an interesting thing to write on your shopping list for yourself. Like, you know you're not going to get her beer. <laughs> Ooh, the very first one. There's 23 secret notes. See, that's just kind of a freebie. Here's a note that's just, here's what I like. That note tells us something funny that happens at the bush that's by the exit that leads out to the beach at 1240 at night. The Mermaid Show, we already saw that. And that's another treasure map that's right above the former Joja Mart. Okay. Way to waste paper. That's the very last one. Please bring Maypal syrup. Oh no, is it Bob? <laughs> it is not Bob. Are you sure? Oh, the. F what is happening? When you get that other note, go down to level 100 in the Skull Cavern, 
and Mr. Key will be waiting there. This is a good place to see that his sprite also got an update. Depending on how you get down here, he'll either be impressed or a little annoyed. Like, if you actually went down the holes and the staircases, he'll be impressed. He'll be a little annoyed if you used a bunch of the automatic staircases, which I kind of did. I was like half and half. I think his larger portrait is different, too. Yep, they both are. He's got more hair. Why is he surrounded by demon snakes? Because he milked them. Oh. He's got an M on it. It must be milk. <laughs> Is he literally a snake oil salesman? He's a snake milk salesman. Oh, okay. Uh, that was just cottage cheese. But by doing that, that's one way to permanently boost my health. Ooh. As opposed to my energy. Well, the cottage cheese diet is supposed to be good for you. And he just disappears. If you come down here normally, it's just flat empty. I do like the implication in Abigail's note that you found earlier that she considers Amethyst's food. <laughs> yep. Once again, playing around with that earlier bug. And there's that second strange doll. The description is super useful. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that treasure map. I have a screen cap of it off to the side. But it doesn't help me at all. I feel like this has to be a specific season or something. Because I am following the directions it gives me, and I am not ending up anywhere useful. I do sort of know where you're supposed to end up, though. You're supposed to end up behind Lewis's house. Back here is a solid gold Lewis. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> solid gold Lewis. It's a big, gold Lewis statue. I'm gonna leave it out in public for everyone to see, and something funny will happen. Oh, uh, that's where all our taxes go. I guess. And that's where they go. Bye. That only happens at 1240 at night. I mean, they both have houses. They could just... Yeah, but where's the adventure in that? They're old, let them live a little. The treasure chest, 5,000, not bad. Thank you for the potato. <laughs> when you leave that statue out, you get an anonymous letter saying, please don't do that, and then he gives me hush money. Quite amusing. Ooh, it's Maypal Syrup. Some Maypal Syrup. <gasps> it was written by a bear. It's the Monkey Pig Mafia Enforcer. I thought we were free, but we'll never be free. Oh god, talking bear. He's more of a wise sage of the forest. <laughs> I like his portrait. <laughs> yeah. He looks very disheveled. Looks like he'd use a good combing. Brushy, brushy. I brought Aunt Jemima. Does that count? <laughs> he just chucks it into the lake. Followed closely by you. Is maple syrup a sauce? I guess it counts. It's liquidous and goes on things. Best is very uncomfortable by how chummy the bear's getting. God, I'm gonna be stuck on this for days now. Oh god, I've romanced everyone in town except you. <laughs> Please put that away. Is he writing his name in the snow? Oh god. So by doing that, that increases the sale price of salmon berries and blackberries. Sure, why not? Because of course it does, yeah. Special bear knowledge. Yes. Ah, you even get a thing in your wallet for it. Yeah, some of these are basically just filling up the wallet because there were these empty spaces before. 
That fourth space can never be filled. It makes me so sad. Me, Cactus. What? <laughs> yeah, why not? Lewis needs his fiber. And Marnie needs her whipped cream. This looks like it was written by Gus, probably. Yeah. Whose diary, though? It's just talking about the bachelors, the older ones. He does have a nice chin. That's fair. He likes stuff you buy in the frozen food section. <laughs> frozen beer. It's the bear's diary. Yes. <laughs> Feel the protein. Protein. Aw. So picture of Marnie and Baby Jazz. Aw. Sharp! Ah! Now that message refers to the Junima plush. But the plush is round and squishy, not sharp. Ah. Uh, and one more useless treasure map. That's real descriptive. The image is actually referring to that little eye that's in the center of town. Right here. Yeah, I never would have gotten that. So I'm going to try to do this correctly. And hope no NPCs walk into you. And hope I walk into things that I can get around, and I don't. Oh. This is just very much, I tried. Yeah, let's like keep getting stuck in corners and it tells you to walk towards the other side of the corner. I imagine I'm getting hung up on the wrong thing. I don't know. But I do know where this is supposed to end up as well. What is that? That's what happens when you leave the statue out. It gets replaced with a rotten plant. Oh. <laughs> and like with the rotten pumpkin, you cannot turn that into seeds or anything. You can just sell it for like zero gold. You give it back to Lewis and yell at him for littering. <laughs> or being really bad at composting. But where the message is actually supposed to end up, <laughs> the Jojamar driver is still here. And he wants a rabbit's foot. No, he wants a quote rabbit's foot. I think he means cocaine. It's a permanent luck increase. And then he disappears forever. Well, it clearly didn't work for that guy. Oh, it does fill in that fourth spot. Look at that. Ah. And like how we saw how the wizard has his own parchment, so does Sandy. She basically has the same parchment as all the secret notes we saw. Just looks like regular paper. And also, we were talking before how strange it is that Shane still gets stuff from Joja Mart, even when they're out of business. I'm not sure if this is new or if it's something we missed, but he says he got it from Joja Mart ages ago. Which I guess means that is a rotten as hell pizza. <laughs> Pubert's grown up! Yay! Do you have your speed increased? Yeah. I still got the cheat menu, because it's just showing new stuff, but... Best is on rabbit's foot. <laughs> it's cocaine. Fucking love cocaine. Yay, free money. P.S. I have not been going to Pierre's. <laughs> oh, man. Nice little haul of money from stuff I've gathered along the farm, like, just within two days. Because I've been leaving everything where it is, not even really bothering. You're actually in the, the only person in the rewards program, and everyone uses your card. So you'd see here, 
the silver star tree fruits actually come from the greenhouse. They increase in star rating every year that passes. The iridium star fruits I got from my cave bats. Because they count as forage, so they're automatically iridium. Some good-ass bats. And now, I believe this is a Vincent heart event. It might be Jazz. It's probably both, actually. A dancing spring onion? Yeah, this is the only one that dances. Spring onion. It's a, it's a mandric aura. <laughs> I would not pull it up. Vincent's a lot more hyper in this cutscene than he is anywhere else. Okay. Not especially. But when you shove it up your nose... Spring onions smell like standardized testing. <laughs> that is what it looks like. That was a very strange lesson, Vincent. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're too spicy for you, Jazz. Because it's full of red ants. And then we'll squash him. <laughs> that was interesting. And that's the last upgrade. That increases the sale price of spring onions by five times. Huh. Pretty good. I wonder if the gold star trick still works on top of that. Uh, hang on. Nah, side doesn't work. Oh no, wait, I didn't have it equipped. There we go. <laughs> it works well. Hey. I love the galloping tractor. <laughs> it also has increased magnetism, which I like. To be honest, even with a five times price increase, they don't sell for that much. Nah. Also, I like how my horse is blind. Where he's going, he doesn't need eyes to see. The best is maxed out. Keyword's still got some ways to go. But that's pretty much it for the life of best uber farmer from space. Just taking stock of everything that's happened. All the crap I've amassed in my house. She might be a hoarder. <laughs> it just now occurred to me. She's learned everything she could. The family will wake up tomorrow, and she'll be gone. They're having a secret meeting in the corner. I don't know what is happening there. There's just glitch text appearing. Is there anything you can actually do with your old furniture? Like, can you somehow get rid of your old television once you get an upgraded TV? You could probably bin it in your inventory. That's true. Wow, not even, like, goodwill. Still got my mushrooms. Still only three of them after all this time, though. I think you might have cut down one of them. I obliterated quite a few. Oh, okay. I will say, it was a very nice life. A life that continued for 20 more years. Worst unchanged. But best grew older. As did her children. Best 2.0 and Pubert have grown up, and it's time for them to go off on their own adventures out into the world.
Ignore the spring plants occurring in winter. I found this in Jojo Mart 20 years ago. Best is sending her children off with a pizza each, a space boots each, to remind them of their heritage from the outer world. And also a couple diamonds each for them to do with what they will. And of course, they each need a hundred bombs. <laughs> no, no, pubert. Give some to your sister. <laughs> Took both stacks. And now it is time to see them off. As Best 1.0 lives here, in peace with her loving husband, Sebastian, pubert runs off to destroy the world. <laughs> Thank you all for watching Let's Play Stardew Val. <sighs> They're definitely my children. Thank you all for watching Let's Play Stardew Valley. Best died on the way back to her home planet. <laughs> Best died on the way back to her house. I was originally thinking of ending it with, like, Best just wandering off in the tunnel herself. But it felt more thematically pleasing to send the children off on their own adventures. The true origination of the Best Clan. One will carry on her legacy and be a humble farmer. The other will become a powerful warrior and a complete doofus. But still a farmer class. The children of Best go on to do exactly the opposite of their own parents, and so now they just go back to Zuzu City and start working for Joja. Damn. <laughs> I think Puber was going to blow up Joja Mart. <laughs> go back to the source. <laughs> and that's why he was in that prison boat that got sent to the island. It all makes sense. He'll, he'll be a star of the next LP, Just Cause 2. <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm going to LP next. I think I'm about done with the, Let's Playing the Farming games. I was thinking about it, but I was looking through the game list. I'm preferably leaning towards ones where you could actually play as women, mostly so I can continue the best clan. And the only ones that are possibly good are like maybe Magical Melody, which is a drag still, and possibly uh, more Friends of Mineral Town. Mineral Town's all right. That would be my vote. I love Mineral Town. So that's a maybe. Otherwise, I'm probably going to put the farming LPs on the back burner. Stardew Valley is kind of an ultimate by this point. But I enjoyed the game. I liked it a lot. The game has definitely improved as Concerned Ape has upgraded it, added new stuff. What I said at the beginning of the LP and what I've reiterated throughout it is that it definitely helps to go into it with a goal in mind. In best case, it was completing the community center and then just doing everything else. But as long as you do that, it helps keep the game from getting boring. It can. Especially we play for like hours on end, but otherwise it's a very engrossing game. It holds the attention a very long time. My cousin actually recently bought it on the Vita. <laughs> he played Harvest Moon 64 back in the day like I did, but it's been so long for him, so he forgot that seasons only lasted 30 days. He was very upset. <laughs> did he think he was going to get a whole three months? Yep. Yep. Whoopsies. Time is distorted in Pelican Town. I think I went into it thinking it was 30, and then it's actually 28, and that was enough to throw me for a loop. It is nice, because then each season has the same number of each day. The way actual months should be if we had 13 months? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But what about you guys? What are your closing thoughts? Well, I, I never actually played it, so I kind of went into this blind, and yeah, all the descriptions I've heard of it are clearly vindicated. There is so much going on, it's evolved in ways Harvest Moon has stagnated. Yeah. And the fact, I mean, it was updated a week ago, so clearly there is more coming. So even if you get tired of playing it now, put it down for six months and come back, and there'll probably be a bunch more stuff. Yeah, Concerned Ape hasn't said if there's going to be even more content updates. If there are, maybe I'll do another video, but for now, the LP and the thread is done. Yeah, I, I had come into this having played just under 200 hours of Stardew Valley and was very afraid that watching this LP would cause me to pick it up again and ignore all of my other games. And that didn't happen until this past weekend because the 1.3 stuff came out and I'm really trying to not get hooked again because... 200 hours is a lot of hours, and I have a lot of games, but it is really so good, and that really speaks to how much sticking power it has, because unlike what we saw here in this LP, I had one save file, and that was it, and I found enough variation and enjoyment without even trying a Joja run or playing thousands of hours of Prairie King to try and get that <laughs> achievement. 
You mentioned Mineral Town. That's the That was my first experience with a farming simulator, and that game was very similar for me. I repeatedly fell asleep with my Game Boy Advance on my face. <laughs> I think you mentioned that. Yeah, and then was very sad because time kept ticking and it was <laughs> wasting time. <laughs> that was how I began courting her with, with the Game Boy Advance and Harvest Moon. Yeah, still, I mean, that was many moons ago and it is still very much enjoyable, something that I would happily play and it just makes me very, very happy. And it's an excellent specimen of a farming game, even outside of my slightly obsessive <laughs> tendencies towards this style of game. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if I mentioned it, but part of what got me to go back to the game with the Jacqueline save file was Voidburger streamed it. Even though by then I had gotten pretty bored with the game, seeing it again, I think by then version 1.2 had come out, and just watching someone else play it made me want to play it again, helped me to reassess it. And also, at a couple points, Skippy streamed the game. I think this is also before the LP started. Pretty much any time I saw someone stream it, I wanted to play it again. It's contagious in that way. It's just so peaceful of a game. The world is kind of ultra chaotic right now, so having something calming to mm. go to can be nice. Especially when you're spending 40 hours a week doing your own version of <laughs> JoJo work. Ugh. Yep. It's nice to just kind of turn it off, go at your own pace. If you want to not farm and just make friends with everybody, do that. If you want to woo everybody, or rather vice versa, if you don't care about getting married and having kids and you just want to go to the mines all day, then do that. There's really not a wrong way to play. There's not really a section where you get pigeonholed into doing one thing or another. If you're looking for tool upgrades, you need to do a certain amount of mining, but I never felt like I needed to huff and puff and grind my way through something that I wasn't interested in in order to get back to the stuff that I considered fun. It's very well balanced that way. Yeah. So I think ultimately, my criticisms of the game are pretty minimal when it comes down to it. There are some things I would have liked to have seen in it, but it's about as good as any of the Harvest Moons or any games inspired by it or similar to it I've ever gotten. And I'm glad I LP'd it. And I'm glad you two, Yami and Irish, joined me for this. Thanks for having us. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thanks very much. I had a lot of fun, and I hope our audience did too. And if I do another Harvest Moon game, maybe we will see the return of the best clan. But until then, goodbye everyone, and thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone.